little girl walking in the cold, her clothing all tattered and thin. Spider rich man standing outside a church, outside a church, outside a church. Spider rich man standing outside a church, the service about to be. Kind sir, she said, dear an orphan child, the cold winds of winter have come. I've no place to live, not in all the world. Oh, help me find work in some. man frowned don't you hear that he good people have gathered in prayer it's a day for worship impious girl impious girl oh impious girl it's a day for worship impious girl don't speak here of earthly affairs he walked off and entered the holy church. The girl wandered down the cold street. And there all at once she beheld a small boy. No jacket, no shoes for his feet. His clothing was shabby, as worn as her own. He shivered against a closed door. Ah, oh, alas, he cried, none will take me in. Take me in, none will take me in. Ah, oh, alas, he cried, none will take me in. Though I'm starving and cold, for I'm poor. Seeing him, she cried, how I feel for you. It's bitter with no friends to live. Here, please take my shawl. It's all I can spare. Though it's shameful so little to give. Wrapped him all up in the flimsy cloth and kissed his cold forehead and smiled. Suddenly, a warmth like a summer breeze, summer breeze, like a summer breeze, suddenly, a warmth like a summer breeze encircled this poor girl and And a tender voice said, my daughter, I'm here. No more shall you weep without friends. For in yonder church, there's no love like yours. Those with pure hearts, their needs I attend. My child, all men's sorrows would turn to joy If they knew that to share is no loss For its kindness softens the human heart Human heart, the human heart For its kindness softens the human heart I know I who died on the cross. Worship means but love, and my love you found by your gift to me here in the cold. 
and she saw their clothes were now woolen and warm, and the shawl was now spun of fine gold. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came by way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. East, in metaphysical terminology, means again, as I said, the point between the eyebrows. Another reason for it being the east is that just as the sun rises in the east, so the sun of divine, the spiritual eye, the sun of divine awakening comes when the mind is focused here, and suddenly you see that light there, and then that light fills your whole body. Jesus said, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. And this is the single eye that he's talking about. And that light fills your whole body, or as it says in the Bible, the earth shined with his glory, which is to say that the whole earth is blazing with that divine light. Good morning again, friends. So such a beautiful song by Swamiji on love for God, love for each other, sharing, giving. At this time of Christmas, I thought it would be very appropriate to play that for you. Probably many of you haven't heard that before. And that was Swamiji singing. Today's topic is on following the inner star to the Christ consciousness. The star of light, of God, of the divine, that's within each one of us. This, we may say, is the most important part of our whole anatomy. This is the point between the eyebrows, the seat of enlightenment, the seat of divine uh, awakening, the seat of super consciousness, uh, the doorway to infinity. And as we meditate more and more at that point, then our own consciousness begins to change. Master would say to the disciples to keep their awareness there uh, all during the day, not to say that your eyes are turned up, but that you're, um, you're uplifted at that point between the eyebrows. This is something that's a natural reality it's not just for yogis or people who meditate. There have been many stories um, in different books on life after death when someone has passed away and come back and said that they found themselves in a tunnel. Many had the same story or similar stories. At the end of the tunnel, they saw a great light. Uh, they heard sounds like bells, which is one of the sounds of the chakras as they were going through that tunnel. And uh, sometimes you hear of children who see a light there at the spiritual eye. Swami Kriyananda Ji, when he gave Kriya to someone uh, in Paris, France, the first time the person did Kriya, they found themselves in a tunnel and moving through that tunnel towards the light. Um, it frightened them. But just to say it is a reality that happens sooner or later, um, especially for those who meditate. What do you see there? There's a, a golden ring of light that becomes a tunnel and you begin to feel pulled, uh, drawn into that tunnel. Some people will only see that golden light in the middle of the gold is a, a blue field, an ocean blue field of light, vibrant, beautiful light. Many people will see the blue light. Um, whatever you see, concentrate on that. In the middle of that blue light is a five-pointed silvery white star, the golden light representing uh, the causal realms, the blue representing uh, the astral realms and the star, the silvery white, the entry to the kingdom of God. Now, Master, um, when, yes, here's a picture of it so you can see. 
master when he uh, met Dr. Lewis. Dr. Lewis was quite skeptical. He came to Yoganandaji and he uh, said, I have read here in the Bible where it says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. And he didn't know Yoganandaji. It was his very first meeting with him. And he asked him, have you, do you know what this means? I've asked many teachers, many ministers, preachers, and I've never gotten a satisfactory answer. And Master said, yes, I, I know what that means. And he said, have you seen that light? And Master said, I, I think so. And he said, can you show it to me? And Master said to doctor, I think so. And he sat him down in front of him, uh, cross-legged, and Master talked to Dr. Lewis first for some time. And one, one thing he asked him was, will you love me always as I will love you? Meaning, would, was Dr. Lewis open to Master? Master knew that was his disciple. And Dr. Lewis said, yes, I will. And he said, I said yes, because I could feel the love flowing. And then Master brought his forehead to Dr. Lewis's forehead and he showed him that light of God. And afterwards, he showed him the thousand petaled lotus, the lights there. Dr. Lewis said it was like bubbling lights that I saw uh, at the top of my head. And so this is a reality that as we meditate more and more, as our eyes are more still, as we're more inward, as we are more silent, as we are more focused there at the point between the eyebrows, more and more the light shines. This is also the seat of will and a concentration. And when we focus there in our meditation practices, uh, we begin to draw in more energy through the medulla oblongata at the base of the skull. You could say the spiritual eye is a projection of the light, the energy that's coming in through the medulla oblongata. And here it's projecting light there. Um, and that point between the eyebrows, as we have, we develop more and more will, the light gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Meaning as you, you focus more here, you're drawing in more and more and more power, divine power. Uh, prana, energy from the medulla, and you are able to see more and more light at the spiritual eye. It's a good thing to hold your arm out at, um, uh, arm out like this and hold it up to about 45 degrees. Look at your thumb as you hold your thumb up and look there with your eyes open first, and then bring your hand down Close your eyes, but keep your gaze at that point. It's not, uh, there's no strain, there's no pain to it. Your eyes aren't all the way up here focused. It's the awareness, even more so than eyes, we could say that is at this point uh, between the two eyebrows. There's a pulling sensation there that you will feel. There's um, a tingling, there's an opening, uh, there's a feeling of going in uh, to the spiritual eye. Even if you don't see light, concentrate there. And most everybody feels something, an, a vibration, an energy, a, a focus of energy uh, there at the point between the eyebrows. And as you, over time, uh, look there and pray to the masters, do the OM technique for those of you who have, who have that gazing into the point between the eyebrows, doing um, the higher Kriyas for those who have those, doing Kriya. And after your practice of Kriya, to sit long, just gazing up at the point between the eyebrows. And typically you see some light forming there, maybe some of the gold, um, maybe some of the blue, the stars, typically maybe the hardest part to see. But... It's light is an experience of God. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. It says in the Bible, as Swamiji said, 
And as you look there, your whole consciousness becomes more and more light rather than darkness. And your whole body, meaning really your spiritual body, becomes filled with light. And so during the Christmas meditation, I wanted to cover this topic now so that during the meditation, you have more of an opportunity to and, and focus and concentration on the spiritual eye. That is this eye, the spiritual eye is the light, the focus at the three wise men who Master said were Babaji, Lahiriji, and Swami Sri Teswarji that they followed when they went to pay a visit to the Christ that was born. This is the seat of Christ consciousness, the Kutasa Chaitanya point, the seat of soul awareness in the body. Uh, this is the point where we realize that the sp spark of the divine is within us. And as we open the door to the spiritual eye, we soar through it into infinite consciousness um, with God. And so um, at this Christmas season, it's a very important time to remember we too have the Christ or Krishna consciousness indwelling in us. How do we find it? We gaze here at the spiritual eye with our practices, during our practices, after our practices, during the day, at any time uh, that you're able and keeping your awareness there all the time. A yogi's energy is focused up, it's not focused down. And so as you gaze up, you find your energy moving up you find uh, energy from Kundalini moving upward, and you find that uh, you are focused here at the point between the eyebrows. And there is where we meet God. That's where we meet our gurus. And that's where we, we become enlightened to become one with God. So I'll read to you to close a uh, beautiful story of Master with some of the devotees <clears throat> where he showed them the light. <clears throat> this is uh, from Hare Krishna Ghosh's uh, book of stories on his life with Master. One evening, Guruji sat in the middle of the group surrounded by many disciples. My mother and my youngest aunt were also there. They had been requesting Guruji for some days to show them something that they may know God. First Master Guruji did not agree, but with repeated requests, he said, oh, okay, I will show you something. Guruji asked all the disciples to leave the room and then said to me, Hare Krishna, you stay here, close the door and switch off the lights. Afterwards, Guruji asked my mother and aunt to sit side by side facing him. Guruji asked them to close their eyes, to concentrate on God, just at the middle of their eyebrows. Then he uttered a few slokas in a low voice, which I could not understand. I sat there and watched, and suddenly, I was amazed to find a divine light fall on my mother and aunt's faces as they were slightly smiling. After some time, Guruji asked me to switch on the light and open the door. When everything was over, I asked my mother, Mother, what did you see? Mother said, Son, I cannot describe in what bliss we were. Later, Guruji said to me, I have shown your mother and aunt, Bhagavan Jyoti, the light of God. Om Shanti Shanti. We have a few questions. I'll request Nitendra to join me on screen. Thank you, Dhanaji. Let me share the questions. <clears throat> The first one is energy. Um, once <clears throat> while doing Priya, I was focused at the spiritual eye. And that's when I saw a tunnel with a light at the end of it. 
it was new to me and I didn't know what I should, if I should go into it. What do you advise in such a situation? This is a reality and it will happen at some point if you meditate deeply. Um, but if you're afraid, it, it will shut down typically. So what do you do? Try to relax, pray to master, to guide you at that point. Um, typically you won't go through the tunnel. You may go in a little bit and come back out. You may go a little bit further, come back out, even in one meditation, a little bit further and then come back out, a little bit further, come back out. So rarely, is it a startling experience where you just you're out of your body, but you're little by little you're going through the gold golden tunnel and a little bit into the blue light maybe just try to enjoy. Um, I think the fear comes from the ego attached to the body, but as you meditate more, you just it's not there, and. I always just pray to master, whatever you want is what I want. If, if this is right for me, fine. If it's not, fine. But let's face it, our meditation practices are, they're profound. They're deep. It's not like, oh, I'll just, oh, my mind will always be racing my whole life. It won't. It will start calming down. No, oh, my body will always be restless my whole life. It won't. Your body will start calming down. Oh, I'll never see anything or hear anything. You will. And so prepare yourself by doing your part, the practices properly, but also um, at different times, like now it's a very deep time of year, go a little more inward, meditate a little more. It's winter, winter time now, and just take your energy in more. And um, why not ask what Dr. Lewis asked of master? I would turn it on the other side and just ask master, if it's right for me, if you feel I'm ready, help me to see the spiritual eye. That's what I would say. And the fear, it's, it doesn't last long. It, it's just, it's the, the ego gripping the body, but just let it go. Enjoy a med your meditation. Also tensing and relaxing at the chakras is a wonderful way to open up more and relax more and allow the energy to flow more freely. But uh, yeah, there are times when you, you you see clearly, other times you see kind of vague colors, but you see colors, sometimes it's brilliant and you just, you just love seeing that. Now that's not enough to just love seeing. You need to start going into what you see and immersing yourself in the spiritual eye. Thank you, Dhananji. <clears throat> Related to what you mentioned on what you see, what does it mean if I see the light, but it is distorted and it is dim and not sharp and at times moves away rather than forward? Sure. It means your concentration isn't focused enough. Um, this takes time, typically. It's not something I, I took Kriya last week. Now I'm going to go into the spiritual life. Also, it's from past lives. Swamiji said, if, if someone goes into Kichari Mudra right away or they see the spiritual eye right away and they continue to see it, some people may see it and then nothing happens afterwards. He said that's come from past lives. But uh, there was a woman who went to one, uh, when Dr. Lewis had his study group, meditation group at his home on the East Coast of America, she came to one group. She could see the spiritual eye. She was brand new. She could see through the walls. She could, you know, she had very deep experiences. She only came once. But she never came back. So <laughs> if you have Divine Mother gives you a gift, utilize the gift, use the gift, be grateful for the gift. And uh, whatever happens, what it is, is a lack of concentration, focus, and inward, inward focus. Our energy is too scattered out. Master said the reason people don't see light is because their energy is so outward. Seeing outwardly, try to see inwardly, meaning 
take the time to quiet your mind, quiet your energy. Sometimes at night, this is a wonderful thing to do, and or early in the morning, just put your hands on your eyes while you're lying in bed. And uh, it's already should be dark, but anyway, if you need to put your hands there, do and just just look there at this point between the eyebrows. That's a time when you're more relaxed, you're about to go to sleep. And in the morning before you get up and you're relaxed and you're about but before you get up, just look there. Middle of the night, if you wake up, just gaze there. It's it's easier typically to see when you're open, receptive, and relaxed. Thank you, Danaji. We have two more questions. Mm -hmm. First is, what is the source of light at the spiritual light? Yeah, as I said earlier, it's the light, the energy coming in through the medulla that's projected here where you see the light of the spiritual eye. And um, that's all I know about it, is that it's the light from the medulla. But also, Master described it as the, the light of the as uh, astral realms, then the causal realms, and then infinity in the middle. But I think once you go deeper into it, you understand more. You feel the source more yourself. Finally, Dhyanaji, you did touch upon the fear aspect of it. Um, the question is related to that. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of going deeper into the spiritual life. I do feel a pull there, but I'm afraid to go with that pull. I'm afraid that I'll be in over my head. Mm. So what would you suggest? Okay. I have some thoughts. Maybe do more things that help you to relax. That person is not relaxed. So yoga postures could help. Uh, tense and relaxing at the chakras could help. Ohm technique could help. Uh, maybe energizing, tense, relax. Like if, if you're starting to see the spiritual eye and then you, you get afraid, Maybe just do a few double breaths, tensing and relaxing, tensing and relaxing. Uh, inhale, even count breath, hold, exhale. Um, the person needs to be relaxed. I mean, it's a focused relaxation. It's not passive. But as long as there's a lot of tension, uh, let's just put it this way. You're, you're going to be going into the unknown. The unknown is really the known. <laughs> this is more of the unknown to us right now. And we know, we've seen the light before. We've been in the astral realms before. We've gone, we've had so many incarnations. We've gone beyond the body so many times. Peggy Dietz, with one of Master's disciples, would talk about her problem wasn't getting out of the body was how to get back into the body because she was out so many times. And so at a certain point, a yogi starts to have these experiences. And so just seeing the spiritual eye is only the beginning. We have to begin to just offer ourselves self-offering to God, to gurus, and uh, profound experiences happen. We have to be prepared for them. So how do you prepare? Do the practices as master said. Otherwise, if a person never energizes, they don't do maha mudra or kriya practices, and then something happens, they're going to be so tense that nothing will happen or it won't be comfortable for them. So just uh, do the practices as given. Pray to the gurus to help you, to guide you. When I come across experiences that are, I feel like I'm, I'm in over my head, I just pray, Om Guru, Om Guru, Master guide me, Master guide me. And I feel his presence there. Sometimes I go deeper into it, sometimes it, it doesn't happen. But um, we have to know that this is a part of our path. It's a part of, <laughs> it's a part of knowing God. And um, we have to be prepared for that. So, okay, any other questions? No, Dhyanandi, that was the last one. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. And I hope that this was helpful for you for the eight-hour meditation. God bless you.